the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Grant unto mortal men this great favor. He will allow us to walk the very corridors that wise men of old found. Grant us this favor, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, can we do Bible study for for 20 minutes. So many issues have been raised today. So we'll just do Bible study for 20 minutes and then uh, the Lord will, will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray 20 minutes will, will be okay. Now let's turn to Genesis chapter 3. You know, it's not good to lose a spiritual thing. It's not good. It's not good to lose a spiritual thing. Because I'm seeing that a few people were given some privileges of God. And because they were not wise in the spirit, they trivialized the things that God had made available. Sometimes there are some things that you lost, you lose, sorry. You may not get them again. But God will have mercy today. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did it. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And sowed there, and they sowed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. Now, my emphasis here really is the three questions of God. And when God, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, first question is, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Second question. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? What's the first question again? Where are thou? 
Now, those questions are coming from a dimension. The, the first question is not whether or not you are naked. The first question has to do with your location. All right, let's go on. And it's, who told thee that thou was naked? Third question, has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? That's the third question. Now, if God permits, we'll just do one question today. I, I think we need to really open up this subject of spiritual clothing. We need to open up the subject of what? Of spiritual clothing. Because all through the Bible, the subject of spiritual clothing is associated with spiritual food. All through the Bible. Food and clothing. The children of Israel, they ate angels' bread. The impact of the bread that they ate was experienced on their clothing. Their clothing did not wax old. Their clothing, their shoes grew out. Now, so it is always linked with food and clothing. When Jesus was to be crucified, there was a part of him that they removed first before they began to negotiate his crucifixion, and that was his garment. When Jesus' garment was isolated from him, the Bible revealed it was a strange kind of garment. A garment that was seamless. And now please look at your own garment. If you find a borderline where the tailor did a skillful one, it means that's not Jesus' garment. Because Jesus' garment is what? It is because of the fact that that garment was foreign that they casted laws for it. They wanted it. It was not a product of the tailor's work. It was a function of the food he ate. Now, you see, I, I really, because of time, we may not press this much. But I want us to go on a journey. Okay, you are with me now. Now, I want us to go on a journey quickly, just little Bible study, and then let us pray. If we pray accurately, God will answer. This garment of which Paul spoke about that we need to be we need to groan to be clothed upon with this garment. All right, let's first of all let's see the beginning of this discourse. Genesis chapter 3 begins by the introduction of a species in creation. An analogy was done, was carried out about that creature called the serpent and uh, in the design of creatures the creature that was supposed to be an expression of the character of subtlety was the serpent there was every creature has a superfluous point a superfluous expression hallelujah Amen. now this is what informs what the devil possesses now the truth is this even though we have we're all men but we're not the same in the witchcraft court there are special specifications that are required before you become a candidate that they want to initiate you must have some properties those properties satan has not been given license to create all right because he has not been given license to create he is in the business of perversion he borrows instruments for his use but even though he borrows instruments for his use he doesn't just for his chief uses he doesn't just use any kind of instrument there is a specification that he needs to function with in order for him to get best results if you are still with me say amen, amen. now so the bible took us on an expedition of anatomy and physiology 
and he said the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made right he's just showing you inherent and innate potential which is a function of the dexterity of the designer has nothing to do with satan all right now but satan was on a mission what had happened before genesis chapter 3 was that there had been an invasion of heaven and this invasion that took place in the heavens was an invasion that was laden with much treachery one third of the angelic band sided with the lucifer in order to take possession of a dominion and of a throne that was resident in zion now based on what happened because he desired a, an estate which was not his ordination from god that was why he fell and that prophetic story was told in the book of isaiah chapter 12 verse 12 to 14. hallelujah now heaven had di displaced this particular tyrant that sought to control the affairs of the government of god now if you read your bible critically in the book of revelation chapter 12 i believe from verse 7 this 7 12 or 12 7 where that serpent was cast out of heaven and then there was a cry woe unto the inhabitants of the earth because the the next available place for this one that had been cast out is the earth realm. so knowing that this beast was seeking presence relevance in the earth realm god now came and gave an instruction now the earth was operating in harmony adam would just wake up and say mango I, no see i want you to you don't, don't understand it. if you were the guy in eden there was a lot to discover a lot to now that was what he was doing all around and god now called him that there's danger coming so we need to establish order and government here so that your realm will become it will not be porous it will not be it will not have any affinity with the vengeance that wants to overtake it on the strength of that god had to implement his government by giving an instruction you can access everything but this tree let it be out of bounds in this way you will operate under my covering and my government you become my projection you become my definition upon the face of the earth hallelujah Amen. now but the guy did not know what was at stake he felt that the physical earth that he saw was all that was ah. <laughs> oh my god you see before we talk about clothing we must capture all these factors adam did not understand that any action that initiated will have a ripple effect in the spirit realm he didn't know he thought that he was operating in isolation in a realm that was so distant from any form of reality and he never wondered how god was able to break into that realm and come in the cool of the day from which doorway he didn't ask that question but the spirit realm and the natural are so blended together that they don't even have a boundary. It's just that the spirit realm exists in another dimension, an elevation. And you can access that realm not by your physical senses. You can access that realm only by faith. Alright? Are you with me? But it's not as if it's distant. It's right here, but it's not accessible with the normal senses that you have exercised all this while. And so the instruction was given... So that order can be established, so that government can be established, and also so that preservation can be possible. Because the, the, the instruction was in the day that you eat of this food, what will happen? You will surely die. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Now, let me pick a few points quickly. We may not be able to cover it the way I intend that we'll cover it, we may not be able to do it thoroughly. Now, so Satan now comes into the garden. Now, Adam doesn't know that he's actually placed in the garden to be the burglary of that creation, the shield of that creation, the brazen wall of that creation. For the first notable assignment that God gave to him was that he should dress the garden and keep the garden. Now, you see, since he was going to keep the garden, what it means is the megad. 
the guardian of the garden. That was why when he failed, a guardian cherub was put into that garden because he was supposed to function as a guardian. Now, let me deviate and tell us what guardians are. Now, there are some spiritual things. That's why God will allow us ascend to some level of maturity before he reveals some things to us. Because we will not be able to handle it. If we have access to those things in immaturity, there will be more hot done than good. There are some things that should not even be uttered among men. It will cause a crack in the earth. And that's why when Paul was giving visions of the underworld, he was warned that those things are not to be uttered among men. There is a wisdom that angels had or angels have which men should never have. That wisdom is a strange deep kind of wisdom. It can run and run a, it can actually engage a program, initiate a program, a program that is anti-God and that program nothing will be able to stop it because it's operating from a base, a wisdom base. A, a, if it is initiated by man, it will run on it. The possibility for it to run exists. Now, so, there are these wisdoms, they exist, but God wanted to shield us from it. So that we will only have access to the wisdom that comes from light. Many things happened when Adam rebelled. So, Satan showed up. When he showed up, he knew that Adam was educated a little in the things of God. So he knew that he was not contending with an entirely blank novice. He knew he was working with somebody that had knowledge without experience. So because of that, he needs to take a shape and a form that will be most elusive. And that was why he chose the serpent. Why? Because the serpent was superfluous in his subtlety. And the kind of mission that he was coming for, he requires all the subtlety that he can get. So he now possessed that serpent and applied spiritual power to the sub subtility and multiplied it. Do you understand it now? Yes, That's why he chose the serpent. Because of that character. Now, you see, don't be so quick to say that if you were Adam, you would have done otherwise. Don't be calm down. Calm. Don't. <laughs> yeah. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So he, he had an oppression a power that was galvanizing the subtlety of the serpent. You see, the serpent doesn't have emotion. He wants to kill you, but it won't, it won't do like this. He won't, he won't make his face strong. It just like that. The serpent, he bites without enchantment. He has his own way. If he wants to hide, you will need to look for him. His ability to hide is... is Right here is an open floor, but if he comes here now and he wants to seek a hiding place, he will know where exactly to perch. That will be most difficult to discover. He doesn't live. It's a strange creature. And so the devil needed all of that in his. Because of that, even till today, very deep operations of darkness still take the form of this serpent. Because subtility. It's an advantage that human beings naturally are not given defenses for. And that's why we need to go beyond the natural many times to spot the activity of the devil through discernment. Because his subtlety is going to beguile all of your, your natural inclinations. In fact, your, your school, your education, your exposure is going to be an armory against your discernment in the day that he wears the cloak of subtlety. That was how he came into the garden. And when he showed up in the garden, you know the rest of the story. He engaged the woman. Now I want us to take a zoom in and check Satan's discussion. Can we zoom? Now, how did he enter? He came in with a question. Did God say? Because he comes to question the word of God. So that he can yield some doubt. He comes to
question every commandment that God has given. And then shows you that it's not exclusively the way God has prescribed it. There are corners and corridors attached to it that is not, doesn't make it as rigid as God has presented it. He doesn't really come to disclaim what God has said. He just to cast some aspersions upon it. And reveals the possibility of modifying it in some form and some sense. So he comes with a question. And the real reason why he comes with a question is because he is not as knowledgeable as he needs to be to carry out an effective attack. Yes. In the realm of the spirit, knowledge must be accurate and precise. And the devil, since he fell from the heavens, is short of this knowledge. Now, you see, he has some knowledge because while he walked in Zion, functioned in Zion, he was the anointed cherub. Among, I don't know, maybe Bible scholars will help me. I don't know if there's any other cherub in the Bible called the anointed cherub. Because based on the limitations of my Bible study, I found out that there's no other cherub that had an anointing on him. Indicative of the fact that if you put all of the angelic realm together, Lucifer was the chief of that realm. Hallelujah. Now, by the anointing that was upon him, there were, he was able to gain entrance into some of the secrets of God. Therein lies his undoing because he has an idea, but he doesn't have accurate ideas, accurate knowledge. So he comes into the garden with a question. Did God say? Now, he has an idea that God says something. He sees that the way you are praying and fasting, you, you have a conviction. But he's not, he doesn't know it. So he wants to, you to help him afflict you. He wants to update his data bank. He needs information from you and you need to cooperate with him for him to effectively afflict you. The reason why witches meet every night is because they need to update their data. They need to, before they carry out a major assault on your life, it takes nothing less than six months. They, they need to check it. The angle, the Ah. your thought pattern, your temperament that you are always giving to anger anger, anger ah, he's good he has our property he likes our ways so it means if we do this he will almost always respond like this he's a scientist, he's a scholar he carries out numerous assortment of hypotheses if he can get to understand your species effectively. To orchestrate an attack from the spirit realm is not just as easy as you think. Many of us have glorified the devil. And he likes it. He likes it when you don't know that he is limited. Hallelujah. Now the Bible acknowledges that he, he is great. Because the Bible says greater is he than that is within you. That is to say that he acknowledges, God acknowledges that that guy is what? So don't, if you play around this corridor, you will be hot. Don't say like some brethren used to say those days. <laughs> I heard a preacher, he, pre he preached well. He said the devil is a fool. That's not biblical. He's a thief, I know. A destroyer. Then when you become reckless and think he's a fool, he will mess you up in that same city where you preach that summer. Because he knows you have a wrong perspective of him. And you are going to suffer. He will exploit that error. And unfortunately, that same preacher in this same town, that fool, So, don't be, it's great. Don't forget that. But say, greater is he that is in you. Not you. Not he, not you. You are not a match for his greatness. Maybe one day just take off like, no, if you go like this, you won't come back. <laughs> the guy is great. But it's only him that is within you that is what? That is greater. 
And many of us have not yet learned how to function with him that is within us yet. We don't know how to be led of him, how to function by him, how to respond to him, how to accept and to stay under his authority. We have not known that. And then we think that we are educated in light enough to contend with him that the scriptures acknowledge his greatness. Notice that the Bible says, speaks about some people. He said, Jotam became mighty before, because he prepared his way before the Lord. There were other people that God said they began to be mighty. Never said they ended up being mighty. Those are two different things. You gave your life to Christ. You, you began a journey. It began, but never said that you... Alright, let's stop that. You see, there, there are perceptions here and there. And we need to come back home and really find out what is the matter here. Now, follow me. Um, so, this guy came up with a question. And Eve was not experienced enough to understand that he did not have enough information in his data bank and he needed to update it. And she now said, well, even if you see his question, you see his, the scope is wrong. Yes. See, did God say you guys should not eat of any tree? You see, he, he was too general to be strong. Too general to forge an attack that will, be, that will carry your name on it. You have to fill in the gap to bring your own specifications so that he will know the direction to set the arrow. Now, it was Eve that gave him the information. Say, well, this, well uh, the truth is this. God had said that we should not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, lest we die. Now, she said something that God did not say, but that's not our emphasis now. She said something. Every time, that thing she said that God did not say is the voice of man. Because man always wants to work for God. But man does not understand that service to God that will be accepted by God must be done under the influence of the Spirit of God. Every other service to God that was a function of the strength of mortal man is too, it's like Uzzah's Uzzah, strength. God will not accept it. It must be powered by the grace of God. It must be fueled by the spirit of god before it can be accepted but she said something that brought a perspective which was different from what god instructed but that's not our emphasis now she added something to me so the guy now said oh that's what god said all right you know he had updated his knowledge he didn't ask any questions because the question he asked actually captures the scope of his expectation of answers. And the devil can ask you a question by tempting you. It's not vocal, it's not verbal. Just brought something your way. That thing he brought your way was a, a, an embodiment of questions. And the way you respond to it will give him the necessary answers required to formulate your own specific attack. He's a, he's, he's a scientist in the laboratory. Just imagine a very one man with afro in the lab now. And his, their things are boiling. So he needs some information. So he sends a temptation your way. By the time the figures come, he knows how to program it. And then you are now within the scope of his attack range. So she gave him all the answers he wanted and now said, okay, okay, that's what God told you. Well, if this is what God told you, let me tell you the truth. Because God said in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. The other time we did the woman conference, we wanted to analyze what he meant by surely die. Because in the, from the linguistic approach, surely, the word surely and the word die is the same word. And um, in English rendering, it would have read, You shall die, die. You shall die the dead. Or in dying, you shall die. Now, what's the meaning of that? Because that statement is what led to the first question. 
where Ada. Are you with me? Oh, you are not here. We have not come to the clothing yet because. All right. Are you still with me? Yes. Now, now this is what God means when He said, "In the day you eat of this food, you will surely die." God was saying, "See, Adam was actually alive to God." You know what it means to be alive to God? You have the investment and the resources of God operating within you for you to be capable of sensing the movement of God. Now, see, when Jesus was with Nicodemus in the book of um, John chapter 3, hallelujah, you, you remember what he told him? He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, the organic layout of being born again is that your spirit is recreated and then the Holy Ghost tabernacles your spirit. All right? Now, the Holy Spirit empowers you through his ministry in your spirit for you to be able to perceive what is happening in God's kingdom, what God is saying, what God is doing, what God wants you to do. He's the one that brings that ministry. Are you with me? Now, that is to say, are you still here? When God says, if you eat, you will die. What he was really saying was that you will be dead to me. You will not have the capacity to perceive my movements anymore. You will not have the capacity to function in my realm anymore. You will fall from my realm. You will no longer be present in my realm. Because my governor, the Holy Spirit, that is supposed to be bringing you into my realm, by violating my commandments, he will be withdrawn from you. So you will die to me. You will not be able to connect with me, to connect with my reality. You will be dead to me. Now, in the New Testament, I don't want to move on. It's not, no time. So I would have gone to one scripture now. Because Paul says that now that we are born again, we should be dead to sin. And what? Alive to God. That is how the template is supposed to run. We are dying to sin. But we are resurrecting to the reality of God. But the inversion was what took place in Eden. He died to God and then he became alive to sin. So that's what it means when he says, In dying, ye shall die. Now, wait. You know why he's died, die now? So he has died to God. Now he's alive to sin. And the wages of sin. So you understand that? So he has died now spiritually to God. He's no longer alive to God. And because his only reality now is sin, there is a punishment for, for exploring the corridors of sin. It's on the strength of that that physical death will not take place. Now, physical death will be a process, but death to God will be instantaneous. So, so you can now understand all the renderings in that ye shall die you get it all right so that's now you see hey whoa jesus i don't know how we'll get this one okay i think we can understand the questions now i think we, if we jump to the questions now ah no there's one more thing there's one more thing this man has died to god now, God would have been the, the operating system of his life. Every knowledge that he would have gotten, he would have gotten it by the oppression of God. And that's why in the New Testament, Paul speaks so much about spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is the knowledge that we get through the oppression of the Holy Spirit within our spirit. It's knowledge that you do not learn. It's knowledge that you cannot be taught. It's knowledge that is handed out. It's knowledge that is revealed. This knowledge is not of the mind. It precipitates from the spirit. This knowledge is not of men and ancients. It precipitates from God. This knowledge can defy the devil. Alright? Now, so, in the kingdom of light, 
there is an educational system that God has ex established in Christ Jesus. And that education is a revealed form of education. The reason why it is revealed is so that it's not common. It's not available to the devil. So the princes of this world, they don't know that. Because this knowledge existed before creation began. And anytime you engage it, you are more ancient than Satan. That's the only thing that can disconfit the devil. You understand that? Now that this guy was going to die to that kind of knowledge, there was a different kind of knowledge that was going to, to come forth. He was going to be drinking from the fountain of another spectrum of knowledge. Oh my. Are you, are you with me? Now, notice I said something which I have not explained. I said that there is a knowledge that existed among angels. It exists among angels even now. It's unlawful for men to interact with that kind of knowledge. But you see, that knowledge became accessible. Because we died to God, we became awake and ready to tap into that kind. That's how witchcraft was formed. It's fallen angels that brought that kind of insight about how to manipulate the spiritual corridors and to bring superimpose the effect of that corridor on the destiny of men marginalizing people bringing all kinds of things that were born out of the will of satan it's another school of not how i wish we had time would have gone a little bit deep just scripture not not the seven books of moses but scripture to study witchcraft from this scripture it's a kind of knowledge that has the capacity to eat the soul just like gambling you can get addicted to it witchcraft when you start eh, it will look hey you are happy i can strike this one a time comes it will eat your soul it mm, ma, 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 ma. and the person that is a practitioner of witchcraft the thing with the spirit will use the person's soul the person doesn't want to but he cannot break out it's an enslaving knowledge the, if you don't know it is better but if you know it Ah, <laughs> uh, you know it's very difficult to disciple somebody that went deep into witchcraft the reason is because they don't believe you need to teach them to trust in god because that knowledge has created an erosion that the holy ghost will have to feel and it will take time now can we go back to the questions that he asked adam where adam it was not because god was not all-knowing but the guy had fallen from the realm of their interaction. He was no longer in that realm. He had died from that realm. A lot of energy was surged into that realm so that Adam would connect it and transmit. But the energy went and came back. So God said, Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Now, have you realized, if we are all current, you can come from Boku and you are saying something. I've, I've heard about this. I picked this thing up too in the spirit. Because when the energy was released, we're all there. So by the time you are saying it, and up, some people cannot pick it, the, the question is what? Where? Where are thou? Now, what was Adam? <laughs> Let's see Adam's response. Then we cannot talk about clothing. Small. Please help me ask your neighbor, where are you? It's first a location problem. Because most believers in our territory are dislocated. Meanwhile, location is very important in your dealings with God. If Elijah had left the brook Cherit, in search of food somewhere, the ravens would have brought food to the location of instruction. And then when they get there, where are thou? They will not take the food back. They will leave it there because that's what they were instructed to do. But the prophet is dislocated, so he will die. Not because God did not supply enough for his sustenance. He was dislocated. A lot of people are asking God to bless them in a location that God did not. Ask again, where are you? Now, 
Get the guy's answer. He said, Hey, where are we? Nine, ma. All right, ten. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. Sorry. When a man is naked, he's supposed to be ashamed. But this kind of nakedness is different. This is the type that makes him what? Afraid. So let us bounce there. And let's enlarge it now. Because we need to know the symptoms of this nakedness. Because in Christ, you are supposed to function in quietness and in confidence. Anything contrary to that is a suggestion of the fact that nakedness is beginning to find expression. This guy was supposed to be ashamed because he's naked. If it were physical nakedness. Yes, sir. But this one is afraid. I felt vulnerable. I felt alone. I've never had this feeling. So I hid myself behind the trees. Hallelujah. There's something I would have said if we were really working on that chapter. The way God came into the garden. That's not the way he used to come before. The way he came this time is different from how he used to come before. But we can't look at that now. But the guy said he was what? Afraid. Now, that is to say that if this garment were in place, he would not have been afraid so anytime you find out that you fear you are without your garment that's one that's one um, we need to press for that Okay. Now, if you are in this hall now, and for a while you are, you are haunted by a fear that you don't know the source, stand up. See, some fears are from the realm. Okay, so we have work to do. We have work to do. And so we are going to call you up again in the next five minutes. I'll just round up now so that we can begin to pray. You can sit down. I heard thy voice and I was afraid because I was naked. So why you led us in prayer? I went to Mark chapter 9. I went to Matthew 19, I guess. And Mark chapter 9. When Jesus ascended to the Mount of Transfiguration. And in prayer, he requested that he wanted to be clothed. With the glory that he had with God and in response to that there was a transfiguration that Jesus did that deliberately to show us our real garment should I press further now in the Old Testament you will notice that Moses went to the mountain top to interface with God and after 40 days when he came out Mortality was swallowed up by something strange, such that his face began to glow. He had his garment on. Notice that when Stephen was being stoned to death, how oh, I wish we had time to look at that. You will notice that there was no fear in that man. He was not a broken man, he spoke with power. It was because immortality had started setting in and it was transfiguring. He was already transfiguring. 
Now, see, God expected that that transfiguration would have struck a chord in the hearts of the people stoning. Because Israel has been expecting that one, that prophet that will come, that will be like unto Moses. And the sign, the, Moses was the height of, 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 of the Jewish prophet. And in the height of all his glory, his face glowed. And God was expecting that, seeing that Stephen's face was glowing, these guys would have known that this is the prophet like unto Moses. Because when Jesus was transfigured, nobody saw Jesus. Nobody saw him. They didn't see him. So the next person that would have fulfilled the glowing Moses was Stephen, that they were stoning. But before they stoned him, immortality, a garment began to clothe him. And when that garment began to clothe him, he was not afraid of death. So he did not beg them. Now that is what a human being with this kind of garment would have done. But a human being with another kind of garment, he began to operate in a certain way that was different from, it was Stephen that accepted his death. It was not the stones that killed him. Because when that garment began to come upon him, the Bible said that he looked into heaven and saw Jesus standing. And Jesus does not stand. Because we are told that he had been sitting down. Because even though God conquers by power, he rules by authority. So he doesn't need to stand to make it more effective. He rules by decrees. That's how authority works. And this day, Jesus was standing. There are only two things that can make the great Lord stand. Only two things in the Bible. Two things in the Bible. According to the book of Psalms 82, verse 1, the Bible says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. That's, that's one of the reasons why he can stand. Because the mighty have converged. Two, the Bible says he judgeth among the gods. If God wants to judge the gods, he will be standing. That, those are the only two things I found. If you find more, I will change. I will change. But for now, I found two. So when he wants to judge the gods, he'll be standing. Now, if you check the scenario, the two, the two issues are satisfied. Stephen the Mighty was the one that was in the center stage. The great one stood up so that he could issue judgment. If, if Stephen would allow him to burn like thunder, it was in his own case, it was his destiny to die. We are not told that Stephen was destined to die. We are not told, we are not aware. Now, so if Stephen had allowed him, he would have brought judgment. But Stephen said, no. Don't hold it. Don't hold it against them. Now, listen to me. Can a human being do that? Mort mortality was being swallowed up. What manifested was not, a, not life on this plane. It was life on another plane. It defies reason. It defies all reason. Why a man will say discharge and acquit them. They don't know what they are doing. No man will do that. Not the best tongue talker. He was clothed with another garment. And he transcended the ways of men. Hallelujah. Amen. It was a garment that he wore. I'll have to stop there because of time. Now Paul said, we always grown to be clothed with this garment. Because Paul, the same Paul that wrote said, there were times I was with you in fear and in trembling. So there were times that Paul was afraid. But every time Paul was afraid, he went back to groom. And as he groomed, he was clothed. The same man you stoned to death just now, he rises up. After groaning, goes back to the same city. He didn't go back as a carnal, natural man. He was clothed. His psychology was different. His ability was different. 
he could not be broken. He could not be stopped. He can only die if he decides to lay down his life. As long as he has access to his garments, he will rise again. They stoned the guy, thought he was dead. When they left, he, he rose. By the power of that garment, that garment cannot die. And he rose again. I'm not saying somebody died and then they prayed for him. Then he rose. No, he, he was intact. The garment was intact. So men came and tried to stop his life. But he rose. He said, because of this we grow. There's a clothing you can wear. If somebody shoots a witchcraft arrow against you, it will not prosper. Then we wonder... By what means does this man do these things? Now, those of us that understand the anointing on your life, you know when it comes, you know when it's there, and you know when it's not there. Is it true? Because the, the clothing we talk about is Christ being worn upon you as a garment. When that anointing comes upon you, when you are clothed, you know it. You know it? That's the cloth. It is in the heavens now. You have to groan for it to come upon you. I, I hope you know it's that clothing that will be responsible for your rapture. When it's downloaded upon you, that is what will sweep you out from this realm. That clothing. Because, you see, it's only a measure of that clothing you can wear now and still be here. If the real full regalia comes down, you will vanish like a knock. Now, Jesus did what he did on the Mount of Transfiguration to show the average believer your true garment and how you truly are. As long as you do not walk naked, the bomb of Boko Haram cannot be the reason for your end. As long as you decide not to walk naked, you will find Satan and his agents to be weak. Do not pride yourself in this garment. This, this one. It decays and it perishes. So because of that garment, we groan so that we can be clothed. Now, in the next five minutes, we are going to groan. Now, I trust God. Well, he gave me this scripture to share with us, so I trust him that he will show mercy. Because as I'm speaking to you now, I'm not yet clothed. All right? But five minutes so that let's do practical so that you know what it means to be clothed. My eyes can cast out devils if I'm clothed, I can take up a handkerchief, hold it, and then give an usher to be putting it on people, and it will have the same effect as if I laid hands on them. Clothed, I cannot do that with my human body. Notice that when you give your life to Christ, there is a spiritual you that. God born again, not this one. When God speaks, he's not speaking to this one. He's speaking to that you. It is that you that will be allowed to manifest that will bring dominion, not this you. It's not about your mind. You schooled in Harvard, the best computer school in the world. You know all how to do work Excel to Microsoft Word, MS-DOS. Hey, that's not what will deliver us now. We need clothed men. Men that are not naked. Can we, can, we, can we ask God for a clothing? And he will respond right now. Right now. Right now. He will respond. That clothing is what will take you to the nations of the earth. It's not your name, your tribe. It's not your father's name. It's not your clan name. It's a clothing from the heavens. A clothing from God. A clothing. And for this garment... For this tabernacle, we grow. We grow. Haila makopa, ila mamara te sopane, rika pese na boko, barakisha makabranta elekabo. Sandore ke mama mama, lipres ke potena, ikabo shima. Don't go out naked.
don't travel naked don't fly naked don't go to the village naked I heard thy voice and I was afraid because I was naked I was naked I was naked who bore any mosquito la taba a thousand shall fall by your side ten thousand by your right hand because you are not naked nothing will come near you the tabernacle of the Lord in the heavens it descends from above and for this we groan day and night that we might be clothed Sabona biaskibe ekoli ambama rapete sokopoto ukambre skiva sapata kama. Sebria kanda mato bane morosi mene kambala. Oh, it will take you beyond your locality to the nations of the world. At your rebuke, the blind will see, the lame will walk. That deaf will receive their hearing, and the dead will come back to life. Clothe us with garments bright. Clothe us with your holy light, O God. Ema mera kumbre maskai na mumura kena ba. Rakena mama ba ma. Can you sense the garment coming? Can you sense the tabernacle coming from the heavens? And all reports has been rolled away. Receive the weapon of the Lord to stand against darkness in every city, in every nation, in every place. The covering of the Lord. I hid myself. Away because I was not properly dressed, I became vulnerable. Darkness could strike me, and I took an initiative to save myself. I am here, but hidden, I am here, but afraid. Seka baskai lama, eta bori mama. He clothes you now. He clothes you now. Oh, oh. Do you feel the strength, the strength of heaven covering you, raising you up? From the reach of the devil tonight, Jesus is standing. Ah, tonight, Jesus is standing.
receive right now. has come. He said when we grow the tabernacle of heaven it will descend and we will be clothed and we will not be naked. Take away our nakedness and in his place give us the armor of light on the left hand and on the right clothe us with light like cherubs in the high places clothe us with light like angels flames of fire siberemos kanema entosipati morokopre Oh, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Now listen, there are about four things that God wants to do right now. Can you sense the clothing? The clothing? The clothing? Can you sense the clothing? Can you sense it? It's a great torrent of power. No man can die with this garment. <laughs> An angel will appear and take you away from the bomb site. You will find yourself meters away from calamity. Meters away from calamity. We give you praise. Now stretch forth your hand right here. Your, your right hand. Your right hand. When we are clothed, then we can fly. We can mount up with wings like eagles. The devil had to give way. Because we function from the altar of immortality human life is swallowed up a fresh ability and power descends from on her it is yours for the taking aha 
Now, through your hand, he will touch you. Through your hand, through your hand, through your hand, through your hand, he will touch you. Through your hand, through your hand, burn like a fire. Burn like a fire. Burn like a fire. Burn, oh God. Burn like a fire. Burn. Burn like a flame. Cover your people with light. Let no darkness be able to stop them. Burn. Burn like flames of fire. Like flames. Like flames. Like flames. Burn. Burn off the chaff. Burn off every attack of the devil. Burn them off right now. Burn them off. Burn them off. Burn them off. Burn them off. Burn. 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 Oh Lord, burn. Sibera koma shaila habata. Eposkete mosike. Sika mantetos kabata balatem. Born, 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 oh, born, born, like flames of fire, like billowing waves from the heavens. Let everything that you have not planted, let it be burnt off. flames born with glory born with light Shakina born yes Kabarato Sakama Mamarakaya born with glory born with light and let every darkness be extinguished Everyone slated for death, I reverse the appointment of death upon your life. Leave, say the Lord. Leave, say the Lord. Come on, mama. Right now, I want you to pray for your family. No one shall die. We turn the hand of death backward. We make a holy decree today. Nothing shall be missing. Nothing shall be broken. God comes with light. And every darkness must flee away. You can turn away the hands of the devil. Even, even if they have been sold to the devil, we forbid the bitter hands of death will be laid upon ours. We proclaim grace, peace, and safety. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, if you are one of those people that is haunted by an unknown fear, you can put your hands on your head right now. And the angel of the Lord will breathe upon you. Ah, matole kera kambesa. 
He will breathe upon him. Ah, He will flow through your hands. Through your hands he will flow. And he will reach the core of that, that matter. Yes. Yes, 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 Lord. Every demonic force arrayed against your people we stand in the congregation of light. We disappoint his devices and we decree that it shall not prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Now be silent. There is something rumbling in the spirit. It's a mighty deliverance that the Lord wants to rot here today. Aha. Lord, reveal that one that you are break a habo kaputa. Let the yoke, the yoke, the yoke, the yoke. Let it break now. Let it break now. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I am against you, Satan. Pack your load and go. Pack your load and go. Every demonic operation, I arrest you. I arrest you in the name of Jesus Christ. Pack your load. Pack your load and go. Lift up. Oh, she's for me. All right. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Through the mouth. Come out. Come out through the mouth. 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 Come out. Yes, yes. Come out. Come out through the mouth. So come out. It will come out through the mouth. Yes, is yes. Death was released upon you, but it is coming out through the mouth now. Release it to go. Yes, yes, yes. Come out through the mouth. Through the mouth. Come out. Yes. I command it to come out through the mouth. Yes. And that hold of death, I, I remove you. I remove you. Listen, you do not come to the house of God to die. You come here to live. And I banish the finger of death and I cut it off. I banish it. We forbid it. So I banish it. Be gone from her. 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 And we banish it. We banish it. We banish it. Ah, I command. I command the spirit of death. Leave her. Leave her. Nobody dies here. Nobody dies. It doesn't matter where your name was taken. It doesn't matter where your head tie was taken, your hair was taken, your fingernail was taken. I bring judgment upon that covenant. I bring judgment upon that covenant. I bring judgment upon every witch that operates there.
You can come out of that stranglehold right now. You can come out right now. You can come out. The devil is a liar. I break the yoke. I break the yoke. I break the yoke. I break it. I break the yoke. I break the yoke now. Kobo shike. Break the yoke. I break it. I break it. I break it. You will not die. You will live to testify of the works and the goodness of God in the land of the living. Now bring her. Bring her for me now. Now, you raise her for me. I need to look upon her. Let me see your eyes. The Lord has wrought a great wonder here. This one was marked for death. She was marked for death. Death was released upon her. But, but I demand from heaven that a clothing of light come upon you. A clothing from above. All right. Ambela tula kaperi sandolo komo kofalina kadia. I command you in the name of Jesus. Go. Yes. Let her go. And that garment that was used to cover you, I charge you. Be burnt off. Be burnt off now. Be burnt off now. Yes. We'll, we'll do something quickly. Do you expect? Oh my. Oh my. Now. Just rock, come. Check. Okay. Now, go to this road. Just make sure you touch everybody. Now, you go there. Make sure you touch everybody. That road. Leave it. Yes, just touch it. Come. Go here. Touch everybody. I come against the spirit of death. Come, come. Touch all the people in the choir. Just touch them. 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 Now bring him out, bring him out, bring him out, bring him out, bring him out. That which was tied upon you, I remove it. I remove it. I remove it. I remove it. Amana mana mana. Amana mama saka bala. Amana mama roko soko koko. Koroni sete boko mo. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I demand his release. His release. His release. His release. Be released. Just touch. Just touch.
the Lord offer us, offers us life we reject death Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Aha! Hey, call that boy for me. Yes, that boy. That boy, that boy, yeah. Mama, 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 sign. I'm going to call Brenda. Get ready. They'll be inviting you for big crusades. Big crusades. Get ready. Pray. Begin to pray. Let's release your Father, in the name of Jesus. something coming from heaven can you sense the rumbling can you sense the rumbling from heaven can you sense it high in the heavens yes 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 it's a rumbling <laughs> it's a rumbling it's a rumbling from the heavens it's a rumbling a sword of power it's a sword of power in the heavens <laughs> Can you sense it in the spirit? It's like a comment of God.
Listen. Now I'm seeing ice block. Some of you will feel cold. That is as if there's ice block on your body. You feel that you are being healed. In fact, as I speak now, the ice block is being released. It's being released now. That healing is taking place. Yeah. It's taking place now. Now there's healing. Blood conditions. Sugar levels. Arthritis. Lung conditions. The ice block is, is going into the congregation. like ice block yes it's like ice block it's just it's yes yes it's burning through it's burning through yeah it's burning through it's like ice block Osega, I'm hearing it again don't be afraid of deafness. You have a, um, a unique anointing to heal the deaf. If you pray, it doesn't work. Pray again and again. Deaf, all kinds of deafness. You respond to the anointing upon your life. Now, that's healing. It's healing. It's healing. Father, touch blood conditions heart conditions high blood pressure everything blood related everything blood related touch it touch it touch it touch it i beg of you tonight high blood pressure diabetes Touch it now. Okay. It's like ice block. It's like ice block. It's like ice block. Paralysis is being burnt off. I rebuke paralysis. Arthritis, paralysis, arthritis, paralysis, arthritis, paralysis. He's pouring out from heaven. He's pouring out from heaven. He's pouring out. From the heavens, it's pouring out, pouring out upon you every trace of arthritis. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken from you. I cause arthritis. I cause paralysis. I cause it. Go. It's like a storm in the heavens. It's like a storm in the heavens. It's like a storm in the heavens. Omorosi Amina kaina mobodo. Anywhere you're standing, just speak in tongues for five minutes. There are things arising in the heavens right now. Ah, ah, your journey will not end in the common places. I see the Lord honor you. Yes.
the Lord good will to make you an instrument of prophecy. Oh, the storms from the heavens, the fire from the altar, every curse is broken.